All right, good morning. I'm gonna um, wrap up uh, chapter 10 here. We got just got a couple topics to go over with the kinetic molecular theory of gases. And then, um, and then we'll start on chapter six, which is the electronic structure of the atom and quantum mechanics, pretty heavy, deep chapter. Okay, so let's start. Um, by reconsidering the kinetic molecular theory. So remember we abbreviated it KM theory for kinetic molecular. And we're referring to gases, right? So this is the KM theory of gases. And essentially the idea is that gas particles are in motion, right? They're moving in random motion, random directions. Unless you like pop a balloon and they all go out the hole, right? So they're all moving, I'm trying to draw this in sort of random directions. Okay, so maybe this one's going that way. Okay, so they're all bouncing around. They're inside of a container, right? They're very small. So if, even if you add up all their volumes together, it's smaller than the size of the container, okay? They collide with each other. They collide with the walls of the container and bounce off. Okay. And um, the pressure that we measure, or at least the pressure that the wall is experiencing is due to large numbers of these collisions. So pressure is a result of these collisions, force over area, right? Um, and then we also said that there's a relationship between how much kinetic energy these molecules have and their absolute temperature, their temperature in the unit of Kelvins, okay? Unit, units of Kelvin. So we said that the average, so a little line above here to mean average, K for kinetic. So the average kinetic energy of a collection of gas particles is three halves RT. Okay. So there we go. So it's proportional to the temperature. Now we also have an equation that looks, that's related to kinetic energy which says that the average can, I'm sorry, the average velocity, U for velocity, your textbook uses a U for velocity. If you wanna use a V, that's fine. How fast they're moving is equal to the square root of three RT divided by the molar mass. And I'll use the abbreviation that many textbooks use, which is a cursive uppercase M for molar mass. So the square root of three RT, so the temperature, right? Divided by the molar mass, the square root of that ratio is equal to the average speed. Now it's often referred to as what's called the root mean square average, okay? Or RMS average. I'm not gonna go through the details of that, but there are different ways to take averages. The simple average is you just add up all the values and divide by N. The root mean square average is where you square each value, add them together, divide by N, and then take the square root, okay? So it's, it's a different way of calculating the average, but that's essentially what you'll see in the literature for the kinetic molecular theory gases. And then we said there was this thing called a Boltzmann distribution, okay? So let's take a look at the next problem. Okay, let me try to make this a little bit bigger. Oops, come on. There we go, okay. So here's a graph of the probability of an atom moving with a particular speed, okay? For a for a sample of krypton gas. So krypton is a noble gas, it's element number 38, 36, sorry, 36, at a temperature of negative 77 degrees C. 
use this graph to answer the following questions and then round uh, round each of your answers to the nearest meters per second. So take a look at the graph. This is a Boltzmann distribution. See how it starts at zero? The probability, the number of molecules that are moving at that zero speed is very low, almost zero, right? Um, as you move up to higher and higher speeds, the probability goes up and up and up, and then it starts going down and down and down and down. Okay, so we have a Boltzmann distribution. So the probability that something is moving at, I don't know, 600 meters per second is pretty low, but the probability that it's moving at 200 meters per second is very high, right? 200 on the x-axis is really at the peak, right? And meters per second is not a unit you may be familiar with, but if you want to put it into miles per hour, you just multiply it by 2.2 approximately. So 200 meters per second would be about 440 miles per hour. 400 meters per second would be about 880 miles per hour. That's pretty fast, right? Okay. So there's a couple of questions here. The first one is, what is the most likely speed of a krypton atom in this sample? Well, that's easy. Most likely, right? The most likely is the one with the, most, the highest probability. So the highest probability is right up there. And that corresponds to 200, right? Actually, I already answered the question, right? Right there at the peak, that corresponds to an X value of 200 meters per second. So the most probable speed is 200. That's pretty easy. Now, let's see any other question. The next question is, let me just make this a little bit smaller. There we go. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just to see if there's, okay. There we go. So what higher speed, oh, okay, here's our second one. What higher speed is only half as likely? So it's gotta be higher than 200. What higher speed is only half as likely as the most likely speed? Okay, well, the most likely speed was 200, right? And our probability is right there. How many boxes on the y-axis is that? It looks like it's two, four, six, eight, ten. Right. If you count up on the on the y-axis, the most probable speed is at 10 boxes. So half that would be five boxes. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And then they said more, right? So it looks like it's right around there. That's five boxes high. It's what? It's right in between 300 and 350. So that's 325 meters per second. So the probability that the gas molecule is moving at 325 is half the probability that it's moving at 200 meters per second, right? There's also, you know, there's also a speed lower and it looks like that would be around 100 meters per second, right? Or maybe about 90 meters per second, okay? And then there's one more. What higher speed is only 10%? Well, 10% is one box, that's pretty obvious. So we're just gonna come down there to one box. One box is right here at 450, right? There's one box. It's not quite one box. Actually, I, let me take that back. One box is right there. So that's not 450. That's around four, I would say 430. It's a little closer to 450 than it is to 400. So I would say that's about 430, okay? Halfway, but halfway between 400 and 450 would be 425. It's a little bit more to the right. So 430, so there you go. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. That's just to give you an idea of the distributions of speeds, okay? So let's see what we got here. The next issue is calculating the average molecular speed. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. Calculate the root mean square RMS average speed of the atoms in a sample of xenon gas at 0 0.19 atmospheres and negative 57 degrees C. Round your answer to three significant digits. Okay. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I put the equation up there a moment ago, right? It was the RMS average speed. So notice they give you the pressure and the temperature um, we don't really need the pressure, right? Because that, that equation that I gave you just had temperature and molar mass. So we do need to know what the gas is. 
So we do need to know that it is xenon and we need to know what the temperature is, which is negative 57 degrees C, okay? So those are the two pieces of information that we need. Okay. So we're talking about xenon. And we know the temperature is negative 57 degrees C. Okay, looks good there. Okay, so the equation for the RMS, remember root mean square, is sometimes people will use a V, sometimes people will use a U, but I will actually explicitly write RMS there. And it's the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass. And I'm gonna make a couple of notes. I'm gonna write three notes here. The first one is you wanna use the value of R in joules. So use the 8.314 joules per K mole. Okay, so that's important. You also want the temperature to be in Kelvin. So take your temperature in degrees C and add 273.15 to get it into Kelvin. And then the last thing is that the molar mass, what you want to do is you want to have that be in kilograms per mole. Okay, so convert grams per mole into kilograms per mole. Okay, those are your three kind of reminders. Those are the details of this particular problem. So if you get any of those, if you, if you use 0 0.020, what is it, 0 0.02057 atmosphere liters per mole K, or if you use Celsius, or if you use grams per mole, you're just gonna get the wrong answer, okay? The reason for that has to do with the dimensional analysis. If you remember the graph that we just looked at, the velocity was in meters per second. So we want, this equation here to give us meters per second. So here's what happens. If you use for R, so it's the square root, if you use for R joules per K mole, really what you have is kilogram meters squared per second squared per K mole. Okay, let me make this root, this radical larger. Okay. So those are just the units of R, right? Joules per K mole. Then you're gonna multiply it by a temperature. Temperature needs to be in Kelvin. And then you're gonna divide it by molar mass. Molar mass has gotta be in kilograms per mole. Okay, so here's what happens. The kilograms cancel, right? Because a joule is in kilograms, uh, you have to have kilograms for your molar mass. Okay, you also have moles in the denominator and Kelvin in the numerator and Kelvin in the denominator. So that gives you meters squared. So you got the square root of meters squared per second squared. Well, that's just meters per second. Okay, so it's very important then that you one have used the, you know, joules per K mole. Two, you have this being Kelvin, the temperature is in Kelvin. And then three, the molar mass has to be in kilograms per mole, not grams per mole, okay? So let's look up the molar mass of xenon. Uh, facts about xenon, okay? I'm sure you can find this pretty easily, right? So xenon, has a molar mass or atomic weight of 131.29. So 131.29, so it's 131.29 grams per mole. That's your molar mass. So let's convert it to kilograms per mole. So one kilogram is 1000 grams. So you're gonna you just move it over three places. So you get 0 0.13129 and that's kilograms per mole. A lot of sig figs there, right? So we should be okay, okay? So there's our molar mass. The next thing we need is our temperature. So the temperature would be negative 57 
plus 273.15. So what does that come out to? The difference between 57 and 73 is 16. So it looks like it's 216.15 Kelvin. So there's that. And then we've already got the R. The R is the 8.314. We've already done the dimensional analysis. So your RMS speed, pretty simple, is just going to be the square root of 3RT. So 3 times 8.314 times 216.15. And then we're going to divide that by the molar mass in kilograms per mole, 13129. OK? And there you go. So let me put this in scientific calculator mode. 3 times 8.314 times 216.15 divided by 0 0.13129 equals, take the square root of that, and you get 20, I'm going to round it to 203. Okay. So what happens is if you use the 0.082057, you're going to get off by, 100, by 10. Your answer will be off by about a factor of 10. So you might get 20 instead of 200. Um, if you use Celsius, well, obviously, if you use Celsius, you'd have a problem here. Your calculator would give you an error message. If you um, don't convert it to kilograms per mole, you'll be off by the square root of 1,000, which is what, 40? 4 times 4 is 16, which is the square root of 1,000. 20 times 20 is 400, 30 times 30. Now you'll be off by a factor of um, 30, by a factor of 30. Your value will be too low by 30. So I guess you would get um, 20, I guess you get six or something like that, right? You have a pretty small value, okay? So make sure you do that. Of course, we, the units already went through the dimensional analysis right there. And there you go, all right? Looks pretty good. Okay, um, I'm gonna try a little experiment here. I'm gonna go ahead and end uh, the recording so that we have a short recording of the last topic from chapter 10. And then I'm gonna start a new recording and see if that works for our new topic, which will be chapter six, okay? So let me see if that works.